how you guys doing? This is Giovino Santos Neto here for Piano Groove. It's a pleasure to be here talking to you once again, and hopefully you can all see me there. I'm going to talk today about Brazilian rhythmic patterns. And it's really beautiful to, to understand because many times, I mean, everybody likes Brazilian music, everybody likes what happens, the sound of Brazilian music, but uh, sometimes it's hard to get a sense from it just from listening from the outside. So uh, today I'm going to explain to you some of the internal architecture or some of these rhythms. And uh, I'm going to start, even though one of the most popular ones, it's not really the most simple. Uh, I'm going to talk about a, a, a simple samba rhythm that you can use to accompany yourself playing bossa nova or a lot of the sambas, the simple sambas from Brazil and the complex ones too. Uh, so first, the first thing I should make you understand is that the samba, the reason I said it's not a simple groove, it's because it's not a one linear groove. It has at least two layers. You could have more, three, four, but it has no less than two. So I have here with me a pandeiro. This is a pandeiro here, it's a frame drum, it's not a tambourine, it's a pandeiro. And the pandeiro kind of weighs the piano of percussion instruments. So what I'm going to demonstrate on the pandeiro would also show on the piano how that affects. So uh, one of the first elements of the samba is the bottom layer would be what we call the surdo. The surdo is a big drum and usually has a sound like I don't have a big surdo here in my room because the room is not that big. Some of the surdos they're like several inches across, they're very big because they have to provide a very low frequency sound. But as you can see my little pinky finger on, in the back here, so it goes. So this open tone and the closed tone, the open tone is beat number two and the closed tone is beat number one. So it would be like this, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. So that's what you hear. The other layer, simple layer that on the piano be equivalent to something like that. One, two, one, two, one, two, right? So the other layer, this would be my surdo. One, two, one, two. Traditionally, the samba is written in 2-4. So it can also be written in 4-4, but it's really important to feel it as a binary basis. The other instrument that fits on top of that, I have one here too. This is called a tamborin. It's not a tambourine, it's a tamborin, which is a little drum. It has a high sound, so when you play with a stick, you get... So this is the part that is juxtaposed on the low groove of the surdo. So if the surdo is going boom, 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 one, two, one, two. I'm going to play a very simple pattern over that. One, two, one, two, and. One, two, one, two, one, two. When you put these two together on the, on the piano, I can do that because if I have this. One, two, one, two. I'm in the key of F major, just playing the F major chord so you know. doing many variations, I'm just playing this groove very steady. So when you have this, what happens? I mean, what can you do? Uh, and I understand this is not a very simple groove. It will probably take you a little bit of time to practice this and coordinate these two hands. One thing that happens a lot is that people, instead of playing, they play. So in order to understand and separate, I break this pattern of the right hand down into three groups of two notes each. 
So the first one is on the downbeat. One, two, one, two, and. That's it. Two eighth notes. second group of two notes which have exactly the same distance between them as the first two it's just they're syncopated check it out one two the three groups are in place. Now I'm going to add the third group. That's the trickiest one. This goes one. That's the trick. See? You use the two hands and they kind of bounce off of each other. Almost like the pistons in a motor. When one goes up, the other one goes down. So see my hand here. One, two, one, two, three. <coughs> If you keep steady and you can practice for a little bit, you will see that the first hit, the first group of two hits with the downbeat left hand. The second one comes immediately after the this note. See? And the third one, it comes, the left hand happens right in between the two hits of the right hand. So I don't know if it's more complicated to explain or to play, but now that I explain, I'm gonna play. One, two, one, two, three, and. This is a great way to incorporate the pattern. If I would play a groove on the pandeiro, a samba on the pandeiro at the same tempo, it would be one, two, one, two, three. Right? It's also very important when, when playing these grooves to, to perceive the pulse, right? Have a little shaker here. Find one. Use a simple shaker, you can use an egg shaker. Pop, pop. So on. let me count so you know what's coming in. One, two, one, two, three, four. Pop, 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 pop. See? Simple. That is the, this is the grid paper of the music. This is like the basic structure that underlines. This is the matrix. Everything else is going to come from this. And by doing that, I also understand that there's the front of the beat, which is eighth note, and there's the back of the beat, which is syncopated. One, two, three, four. Pop, 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 One, two, three, four. Ah, 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 ah. So basically, there's a front and a back of the beat, and that's exactly what happens when I play the piano. One, two, one, two, three, four. gives rise to many variations. So now I'm going to play the beat for a couple of times and then I'll do some variations and eventually I'm going to apply that to a song. So you see how that works when you have the chord changes. And please, if you have any questions, you can always join in the chat and ask me questions. I'll be happy to answer you in real time as we're doing this. It's always a pleasure to share with you. And uh, you might find this challenging in a way or not. I'm trying to address to make it very simple Something that's not so simple, but there has to be a, a practice that you can do this. Number one, by understanding the role of each percussion layer, the, the grid, which is the little shaker, the surdo, which gives it the low sound, which is equivalent to the piano left hand, and the tambourine, which is equivalent to the piano right hand. So, one, two, one, two, three, four.
also notice that I'm also doing something with my hand in which I'm hinging my hand. Instead of thinking the right hand is just a block of five fingers, you can think of...